As much as I love having the touch screen to control my Milo, there are times when I would like something a little more physical and tactile to use, and that's why today I'm building a CNC pendant. You can get these pendants online from a lot of different sources. They're available on Amazon, AliExpress, eBay. They all have the same basic look and design. You have an emergency stop button. There's a button to set what axis you're moving. There's a unit multiplier button, and then a jog wheel to actually do the control. I've got mine open. You can see in the back, there's just all of these switches that go to this cable, which normally would be wired into your CNC. We're going to do things a little differently. We're going to use an Arduino Pro Micro, which we're going to wire all of those switches into. It's going to generate G-code, which we're going to send into a serial port on the controller board. While you can probably adapt this to other firmware and other main boards, I'm only going to be dealing with setting this up on RepRap firmware with the Fly CDY3 board. The first thing I'm going to do is flash the Arduino because it's going to be easier to do that while it's free before it's wired into the pendant. So I'm here in the Arduino IDE. If you don't have it already, you can get that at arduino.cc. Get it installed, let it do any updates that it needs to do. So next we'll go to the documentation site for this project. And if we go to programming the Arduino Micro, that's going to give us a link to GitHub to be able to download the firmware, which I have already done. So now that I am in here, I've got my zip file that I downloaded in my Arduino folder, which is just some place that I already have set up. I'll expand that. And now we have the source folder. So now I'll open the IDE. Okay, the INO needs to be inside a sketch folder named CNC pendant. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that. But now if I click the verify, we get an error that this file doesn't exist. So what we need to do now is go back to here and you can see what it's done is it's created the CNC pendant folder, but it's only moved the INO sketch. So take the rest of these files, move them into the same folder as that CNC pendant.ino and we can close that. Now when we come here and click the verify, it compiles and we're ready to go. Just Take your Arduino Micro, plug that in. We have lights. Now you can see this is bolded because it sees the Arduino Micro is connected. And just click this button to upload. It compiles. It's done. LEDs have blinked and that step is finished. So one thing I want to bring up uh, before I forget is there are magnets built into the back of the CNC pendant. I've covered these with some electrical tape that I put a dot of super glue underneath to make sure that doesn't come off. We're actually going to tuck the Arduino into this space and we just want to make sure that it doesn't accidentally short against those bare magnets. So don't forget to insulate that somehow. You could use Kapton tape if you've got it or electrical tape either way. So now I guess we jump into it and start chopping things apart. Let me get some thick cutters. And I'm going to take this cable back to this first curl. And Yahtzee to quote Blondie Hacks. Now to get wrench because I'm going to loosen this cable gland because we need to pull this wiring back through. Just be careful, these wires are very fine. They're pretty stiff, but you still don't really want to 
break anything before we've even started breaking things. So now we're just going to pull this back through and again, we've already lost a wire. Okay, so now I'm gonna figure out where this wire is supposed to go and start connecting these to the Arduino. So I'm back from the land of soldering. I have the Arduino installed. All of these wires are connected. The board is up here. I've put in a zip tie for some strain relief. I also wrapped a little electrical tape around the cable so the cable gland grabs it a bit better. I didn't think there was a lot of value in showing me connecting all this stuff, but we should take a look at the wiring diagram. The wiring is very straightforward for the most part. The color code was correct for all of the connections. What I found was really helpful was to break things down by system. So for example, I wired the axis selector switch, which is the XYZ456 connections, then the AB, then the unit selection, so the X100, X10, X1. Then you've got the positives for the LED and the input for the emergency stop. There are a couple places where you need to pay a little bit more attention to the wiring. So the cable coming from the Milo has a red plus five. That needs to be connected to the VCC pin as well as the red wire that's coming from the encoder. So you'll see there's one ground port that has many signals connected to it. There's the zero volt from the encoder, the ground to the command switch, the ground for the emergency stop, as well as the ground for the LED. What I did was use a bit of bus wire into one of the ground ports, then connected all of those wires to it like a little distribution bus. Other than that, everything was pretty straightforward. I zip tied all of my cabling to do a bit of cable management there. So the next step is I have to terminate the other end of the cable, which is going to be a JST four pin and do a little bit of setup and then we should be able to see this thing work. So the pendant is connected to the Milo. The last thing that I needed to do was insert a line in the config.g file, which sets up the serial port on the display connector. So the Milo is on, the pendant is connected, it's got the configuration loaded. I've homed the machine, and you can see that the LED is on, and if I hold the, well, first I have to pick a, an axis, so I'll go for the Z axis. You can select 1, 10, or 100 units there. I'm going to leave it on one. And if I hold down the enable and turn the wheel, there goes the Z. Now if I move it to 10, one click, we'll send it a little more. I can change it to Y. And here's X. Pendant works. So I hope you find this easy enough to do if you would like to build one of these pendants for your Milo. Uh, again, just find a pendant online that looks like this one. I'll include a link in the description for where I bought mine, but there are certainly tons of them out there. Uh, just pay attention to the color code while you're doing your wiring. Work very methodically, and it does kind of help to go section by section to do you know, the axis selection switch, then do the multiplier switch, then do the encoder. Just make sure that you've correctly wired the JST that goes into the main board. We don't wanna flip any polarity, short anything out, and insert that line in the config.g file to set up your serial port. 
Uh, I'm really looking forward to using this. I think it's going to make things a lot easier, especially jogging the bed around, getting ready to do a probing cycle. Um, I'm going to look into the sketch that runs on the Arduino. The CNC pendant that I got is actually a six axis capable pendant. So there are currently three positions on that axis selector that I'm not using. I'm going to see if I can maybe program those to do different G code. It would be really nice to have a button on the remote to just home the machine or the one that I'm really thinking of uh, once I get it in an enclosure is to have sort of a present part G code that after I'm done, I could just trigger the machine and it would automatically bring the bed to the front and kind of center it so it's easier for me to remove my workpiece. But I hope this was helpful. I've got a couple more Milo things going on and I look forward to bringing them to you soon.